Hey everyone, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack. Today is another LEGO Weekly News update, and let's start off the episode by getting everything out of the way that has to do with LEGO Star Wars. First up is Alan Tran from TheBrickFan.com has announced the three Star Wars Rogue One buildable figures. Jin Erso and the Death Trooper were the first two characters that were kind of obvious to be chosen. Of course, we're going to get a buildable figure for the new protagonist and this awesome new trooper. And the third character chosen to be a buildable figure is pretty cool. We have K250 or K250, I don't know what you really call him. There's a few screenshots of him from the trailer, but we never get a good look at the droid yet. He looks pretty big and I have a feeling he's going to be a pretty central character to the story. And based on this shot, he looks like he is a salvaged droid that comes from the Empire. The Brick fan also gave us more details about the Star Wars Force Awakens video game and what we can expect from the season pass. The basic breakdown is this, there's going to be three level packs. There is Poe's Quest for Survival, First Order Siege of Takodana, and Escape from Starkiller Base. There's also going to be five character packs. One for the Jedi, the prequel trilogy, the Freemaker Adventures, Star Wars Rebel characters, and also Clone Wars characters. The Brick Fan did a much better breakdown than I just did. If you want to learn more about the season pass, check it out at thebrickfan.com. And the last thing for Star Wars Lego news is that Hoth Bricks revealed a new set of pictures for an A-Wing pilot polybag. The pilot and helmet have some really nice detail printing on them, and it is an A-Wing pilot based on the designs from Star Wars Rebels. All right, that is it for LEGO Star Wars news, but there were plenty of new things revealed this week, and let's start by showing off all the new sets. Images first revealed by Just Too Good first show this new Ninjago set. This one is called Air Jitsu Battlegrounds, and this looks like one of those games where you use that pull cord to launch these flyers at each other. It could be fun. I've never used a LEGO version of one of these games before, so I'm kind of curious to see what people think about this set. Also, there were a couple of new friend sets revealed. This is the Heart Lake Party Shop. It seems to have a small storefront build, as well as a stand for selling helium balloons. And Friends also revealed the Heart Lake Performance School, which is a bit of a bigger build. It's got the school front, a bench, and actually a pretty nice build for a small school bus. As for the final set reveal this week, Promo Bricks found a few images for a Toys R Us exclusive set, and this one is Joffrey and Friends. Some of you might recognize that this is the Toys R Us giraffe mascot, and he comes in this set as an anthropomorphic giraffe, along with a couple of children minifigs. The release date on this set is still unknown. Also this week, an exclusive minifigure for Nexo Knights has been revealed, and this is going to be part of their Book of Knights. The exclusive fig is going to be Murloc before he gets turned into Murloc 2.0. He only appears in the first episode of the show, which is funny because I only ever watched the first episode of Nexo Knights. He's a much more classic looking wizard minifig, and we haven't had any good wizard minifigs for a while. Also, there's a few more reveals, and these are just some basic home furnishing items that were found at Legoland in Billund. These photos were first released at zoosandbout.com, and here is a Lego minifigure stand. Strangely enough, it's associated with the Marvel superhero collection, even though this is just a regular gray plate piece. I believe at the bottom of the frame it's going to have a Marvel logo there, which I think is kind of too bad. It makes this stand a little bit less versatile. Also, here is a Lego made keychain rack, and they're also now selling or reselling a minifigure cake mold. That is an item I personally hope will find its way back into Lego stores in the States sometime very soon. All right, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but the promo calendar for July is now out, and let's take a closer look at what they're offering. Here is the basic breakdown. July 5th and 6th has a frog for the VIP monthly mini build. During the entire month of July, you earn double VIP points for the police patrol boat or the Crooks Island set. VIPs get early access on July 14th to the new exclusive set. July 15th to the end of the month gives you a free City Volcano Jackhammer with a city purchase of $35 or more. And my personal favorite offer is a free exclusive classic night set for VIP purchases of $50 or more. Anyways, the store calendar always has a lot more information than I ever mentioned during this new segment. So if you want to learn more about what's going on in July, then you can check out the link in the video description below for the store calendar. All right, let's move on to LEGO Ideas now. If you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's the website in which you can submit your own LEGO creations in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set. Now this week, no new sets got 10,000 votes, which means no new sets are now in the review process. So instead, we're going to shamelessly promote our LEGO Ideas set. I've done this a bunch of times before, but my brother did build a mini at -AT that scales just right with the mini at -ST and mini Snowspeeder. Or see our submission in LEGO Ideas, I will leave links in the video description below. Also in general, if you do have time, you can always just take a look at the LEGO Ideas submissions. It's always a really cool way to see new custom builds. Oh, and I guess there's one last reveal I forgot to mention until just now, and that is we now have Spider-Man DLC for the Marvel Avengers video game. This character pack comes with a trailer, and I just gotta say, why does Spider-Man have to drop down like that every single time he lands? I swear he does it like 10 times in the trailer. All right, that is it for LEGO news. I want to move on to the custom creation segment, and this is basically where I get to talk about any of the cool stuff I happen to see throughout the week. 
First off, the talented builder, Jay Fields. I think that's how you say his name. Created Brick Buddies the game. My brothers and I had a bit of fun with this this morning. And this is basically where the builder made simplified versions of a lot of characters from pop culture. And he doesn't tell you what they are, but you have to guess. Some characters are certainly easier to guess than others, but I really appreciate that the builder does not give the answers to any of his builds. So I suggest going through this collection of builds with a friend or two and try to guess which characters are which. It's great fun, certainly a good thing to do instead of real work. Anyways, moving on with custom builds, this one is called Cranberry Black Forest Cake by Sad Brick. Several talented builders have been showing up with some nice little food builds in the last couple of weeks, but this is probably one of my favorites, and mostly because this builder very cleverly showed off the underside of some Lego. In just about all Lego builds, Legos from underneath is always sort of considered unsightly, but here it sort of perfectly captures what the porous inside of a slice of cake might look like. This is one of the very rare cases when using this side of your Lego actually comes to your advantage. This build is called Where Is Jay Going? by Simon Schwer. This build is based on a scene from the book slash movie of Into the Wild, where one of the characters is having a silent moment of contemplation. But this is a great use of forced perspective, where it really feels like the woman is standing on a cliff and looking off into the distant sunset. That back wall really isn't so far away, but this build could very easily fool you, and that makes her a very successful build. Peter Blackert is at it again with the BMW i8 Spider, and he's constantly creating cars, but this one in particular stuck out to me, mostly because that distinct shape of the BMW front is built so well. The hood, bumper, shapes, and placing of the lights are very distinct between different kinds of cars, and when you see this build even from quite far away, it is still blatantly recognizable as a BMW. And here's our last build of the week. This is called Mock Ant by Brick Raven. If you don't like insects, then you're really not gonna like this build because this ant looks incredibly accurate. Everything here is very proportional and this build looks like it is quite stable and highly poseable. It's an awesome build and it certainly outdoes our giant ant from the most recent Ant-Man set. All right, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update. And if you want to learn anything more about the stuff I was talking about, there are all of the links for the sources in the video description below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.